We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It is time to bring in John Hudson for the Unbiased UFO Report. Yes, we're about to get strange with John Hudson here on Spaced Out Radio, who gives us an update on the latest UFO news that seems to be changing each and every day. John, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Dave. I'm happy to be here. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing absolutely great. A little sore, but I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine, and it's been a long day, but you know what? Hey, it's been a great day as well when you have Butch Wachowski and yourself on the show. So nice let's, get, it. let's get right to it, my friend. Uh, there's a little bit of news coming out of John Greenwald and the Black Vault in our UF, UAPTF requesting a briefing from NASA. Explain to me what's going on here. So the, the fun thing about this and, 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 you know, tip my hat to John, this is the kind of detailed work that I, I love to see out of him because he jumps into the weeds, uh, you know, like, you know, not a lot of people do. And basically what he found out was that even though NASA was not on the list of contributors on page three or page two, I believe of the report that, uh, there was actually a, an email trail showing that, uh, um, only a month after the creation of the UAP uh, task force, they requested uh, a a secured briefing. So in a secured environment, um, uh, opportunity to talk to NASA. And there were several emails that went back and forth. You can read about them on John's site. And uh, a couple of interesting uh, tidbits came out of that. And one of them was that um, the the person that was the the acting associate administrator for the Office of International and Interagency Relations, that's not a mouthful, was a guy named Mike Gold. And Mike Gold used to work for Mr. Bigelow. Uh, and so you have some kind of interesting tie-ins there. And um, but essentially, you know, along with a, a previous discovery John made the week before, that essentially the uh, if you look at the the report that the the ONI National Intelligence Manager for Aviation, I think you get paid based on number of characters in your title, um, was a man named Major General Daniel Simpson, and he was of the U.S. Air Force. So we have an interesting pattern here because what we see is that they requested a meeting with NASA only a month into the program and meetings did occur. So you, you have to assume there was some contribution back and forth. And then we find out that the one of the people who helped prepare the actual UAPTF report was a U.S. Air Force uh, 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 major general. So now neither the Air Force or NASA were listed as contributors in the document. But obviously, they both actually contributed to at least a minor, if not a major degree. So it, it, it shed some light on, you know, the, the, the soup that was behind the meal, you know. That amazes me that the U.S. Air Force had a general help write up that report because the U.S. Air Force has been public in saying that they want nothing to do with the UFOs. That Literally, they said, that's on the Navy. Don't come asking us for it. This is all on the Navy. And NASA, well, I can understand, because they finally came out basically yep. saying, we're, we're going after the aliens. We're yep. going after them. Yep. So yep. that yep. one no, I NASA, can understand. Na yeah, no, NASA's been very... Um, it's actually been kind of fun watching NASA's um, statements recently. They, they, they actually seem to be in, kind of enjoying themselves a little bit and getting involved. And I agree, but I will say that there was a note in the UAPTF report that the Air Force had began to engage. It had just only happened very recently. Like it had only happened in the previous couple months. And the thing that you have to remember is that this, this major general, while he was in his U.S. Air Force, he was, 
his 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 post was in the ODNI as the National Intelligence Manager for Aviation. So in that role, he takes on the you know the the this you know the position that he holds, and he will fulfill that position to his greatest ability. So I have no doubt that he put all the effort he could into that report, even if his Air Force you know leadership you know back at home may not have been too happy about it. But because of his role in ODNI, this was his responsibility. He had to contribute. Still strange. Still yes. very, very strange in, in regards to so. that. You know, and in regards to NASA, you know, what I found, I don't know if you noticed this, but a couple weeks ago, NASA, when they jumped on the UFO bandwagon, a little late, but at least they finally did. Did you notice that they cut a feed of a strange object flying by the International Space Station like a couple days after that? Did you notice that too? And they and the thing the thing is is that people think this is myth and rumor, but the truth is they cut the feet a lot. I mean, it's not it's not at all uncommon. I mean, and weird stuff gets seen all the time. And and the truth of the matter is is that we have no idea what they are. It could be natural phenomenon for all we know. But they don't seem to have any interest in in letting the pub, public see it. Um, but the thing that people have to remember is that NASA do, does a great PR job of of branding themselves this benevolent um, organization. But what people have to remember is that a, a significant portion of NASA's business was black. And a lot of those shuttle missions were dual missions where they had a, a scientific aspect and they had a black operations aspect. Because think about it, everything being deployed and worked on in space was done through NASA. So, you know, there was, there was always, there was always a, a lot of the, of the revenue, if you want to call it that, I mean, it's funny money within the government, but a lot of the revenue that they got uh, was through black projects. In, in some cases, the, the shuttle bay would actually be divided up and there would be a line that you couldn't cross unless you had clearance because on one part of the, of the, of the project would be something you know, a black and on the other side would be scientific. So, I mean, NASA, um, uh, NASA Goddard is East Coast, but um, uh, NASA Ames is right by my house. I grew up right near it. And in 25 years, they've let the public into NASA Ames once for one three hour period on a Saturday morning. And that's it. Other than that, for 25 years, the public has not been allowed onto that property. Now, if you have a meeting or something on there, I've been there several times for meetings, but um, for different, you know, for different things. So it's not impossible to get on, but it's armed guards. You have to show a uh, current ID. You have to be on an invited guest list. Usually, um, you know, NASA uh, does a lot of good science, but they aren't the, um, you know, they aren't the goody two shoes that I think they they try to present themselves as. All right, let's move on to Travis Walton because he's finally broken his silence regarding uh, the situation with with Mike Rogers and the denial that everything that happened for the last 48 years plus or 45 years has been a hoax. Yeah, and you know, I was happy that Travis is speaking out. I, I hope he continues to do so because I, I think it's only fair that he gets to speak his mind and 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 plead his case in this whole debacle. But I will say there was a there was something that Travis said tonight that I think really kind of put a, a nice package around. It. And he said the problem is is that when you, someone comes out and attacks you like this, you have two choices: you can do nothing, in which case a lot of people think you're doing nothing because. You, you have no rebuttal and you're, you're giving in or you can fight back in which case you've dropped down to their level. And now it's just two guys throwing punches at each other, you know, swapping insults, you know, and, 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 and it's, it doesn't help anyone. So you don't win either way. And, and so, you know, while I think Travis is, I think it's good that he's doing this. I, I think he's right in that, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't really know. I saw some people commenting and it seemed like the people that supported Travis liked what they heard. And it seemed like the people that weren't supporting Travis didn't like what they heard. So I'm not really sure it moved the needle either way. You know, the sad part about this is his story hasn't changed in 45 years from being hit front with that UFO beam of light, 
you know, we all seen the movie Fire in the Sky, so we don't have to go over into detail on the story. But I mean, we all know the story. We all know that his story hasn't changed. Travis is not a rich man off of this story by any means. All right. And no, it's cost him a lot. He it has cost him a lot. You know, just like anybody who's had an encounter like that, it costs a lot, whether it's family, friends, or financially. Absolutely. And and for him to come out for 45 years and people, you know, who are thinking with a 21st century mind that this guy is a lunatic, this guy's lying. You know, I mean, I had a guy earlier, was it today or yesterday, you know, attacking me in my own Facebook group. Uh, for Spaced Out Radio, because I said this show was entertainment. So here he is talking about uh, talking about the fact that I just admitted that it was entertainment, that all of our guests and all of the stories people hear are a bunch of garbage, and they're a bunch of lies, and it's a hoax show. No, he didn't want to hear the fact that we are here for the entertainment of our listeners who like this subject matter. And we bring on the people who are here to tell some amazing encounters, amazing research, and amazing stories. But all he heard was, "This is entertainment." And yeah, this, they, this, they hear, they hear, they hear the it's it's it, suddenly they think it's gone from from nonfiction to fiction, and absolutely. people don't understand that the way content is delivered and the nature of the content are two totally separate things. You absolutely. deliver, you deliver, you know, um, point of view, factual material. In a in a method that is is usually very relaxing and enjoyable to hear, and that's what makes it entertainment. But it, it doesn't reflect the 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 you know the source of the content. It's it's absolutely but people are touchy. You know people. Oh people yeah, the, are so emotional about this, and they are very clickbaitish. Where if they hear one word, oh, you use the word entertainment. Well, you must be lying about all the programming that you were doing. Yep. No, that's yep. not the case. But they're they got their aha gotcha moment, yep. and that's what Mike Rogers got when he stirred this up for no reason. Mike Rogers was the guy driving the truck and Travis Walton's boss who's wanted the spotlight for a long, long time. Doesn't like the fact that everybody goes to Travis because Mike doesn't get it offers to, to different conferences to speak. He doesn't yep. get offers yep. to headline documentaries on ET contact. Yep. He doesn't get that. And he wants that fame in my opinion, and will do and say anything that if he can't have it, nobody else is allowed to have it. To yep. me, well, that's the way it looks. I agree. And now, but I will add one more quick point before we move on. And that is that one of the things that Travis did talk about recently was that, that, um, that Ryan Gordon, the, the other individual seemed to be specifically making up, uh, uh, data to give to, uh, to give to Rogers to rile him up. It, it was, it was as if Ryan Gordon was, was trying to put a wedge between them and was playing on Rogers insecurities. So there, there may have been some very, there may, I, I want to stress may, have been some very intentional, um, you know, puppet string type activity going on here. Absolutely. All right. Well, keep us informed on that, if you don't mind, because I'm sure there's going to be reaction in a couple of days. Finally tonight, Avi Loeb, who was on with Lynn Wallington on Sunday, talking about the Galileo Project and breaking it all down where he is gathering a bunch of scientists who are going to put their name on the record for the specific purpose of looking for intelligent life out in the stars. Well, he had a big breakthrough with this group in a press conference on YouTube. Tell us about it. Yes, and and it was a beautiful press conference. I'll I'll, I'll put it on 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 Twitter after this, so, so everyone can go. I it's an hour, but I highly recommend you check it out because he 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 goes through this beautiful list of people who are part of the program, and he goes into their backgrounds and explains why each of them are involved. And and he explains that some of them come at it as skeptics. Some of them come at it as non-skeptics and he does a really good job, but what he's essentially saying, and, and he had a, he had a nice tagline that he, he was kind of throwing around that was this organization will use a three pronged approach to replace unreliable 
and I, and I know this is going to offend some people, but understand this is a scientist's point of view, to the approach to replace unreliable eyewitness reports with reproducible scientific observations. And so in many ways, it, what he's trying to do at a grander scale is what um, what uh, what um, Bob's um, uh, thing, um, Skyhub, is trying to do, where, where they're basically trying to create a, a method where uh, you know, data can be shared in digestible ways, understandable to a, a wider population. And so, um, you know, he needs to be applauded. And I think everyone should keep their eye on this because, um, you know, I, I think this this is a, at a big scale and it's getting a lot of press and they're hoping to raise. Uh, they Initially, they've only raised, I think, a couple million dollars. But um, what they're hoping for is to get up into the hundred million type uh, range that that SETI did at one point and put some real serious money and research behind this. It's it's very as, promising. As long as they tell the truth and they don't hide anything, and I don't think Avi Loeb is going to hide anything, but if they start hiding details, much like we believe SETI has done, as well as NASA and other groups, then then it's a waste of money. Well, you got to remember, SETI, SETI is where NASA people go after they retire, right? Na and SETI is full of NASA folks. So it's a very similar mindset. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I know a lot of people at SETI. Some of them are wonderful, brilliant scientists and good people. But my point is, is that, that one of the things that Avi Loeb talks about is the fact that he wants to, and why it needs money, is because they have to start building a, 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 you know, apparatuses, they have to start building uh, actual gear so that they can record this on public gear that has no relationship to the U.S. government so that they can guarantee that the data will be accessible and will be seen by all. John, we'll talk to you in two nights. Thank you for a great unbiased UFO report. People can also catch this feature on our YouTube channel as well. We'll talk to you in just a couple days time. Thank you, sir. You have a good evening. Get some sleep. Let's get to the news, shall we?